to disarm the American people according to their plans. Do you understand that? Three years to disarm the American people according to their plans. The Open Sky Treaty was just signed about three years ago, and Russian aircraft overfly the United States to inspect the disarmament of the United States now on a daily basis, and we are overflying what used to be known as the Soviet Union. We are disarming, they are not. According to their policy, they will not until everybody else does, although they say they are, and although our government is fooling us into believing that they are, they are not disarming. Understand also, ladies and gentlemen, it is a scam, because if anything goes wrong, if anything goes wrong, the military might of what used to be known as the Soviet Union will enforce the formation of the New World Order. Accompanied by the treasonous military officers of the United States Military Services, all four of them, who are in total complicity and agreement, and are even now as we speak, acting as the police force for the New World Order. They know what they are doing. They are sworn to protect the Constitution for the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and regardless, they are engaged in treason. So if you're looking for our own armed forces to save us, you're looking in the wrong place. The only defense you have is the militia and those members of the armed forces who at the specified time will realize what they were, are doing and come over to us with their men and their equipment. And that will happen. I don't know on what scale, but it will happen. Quote, the 10th special session of the General Assembly, the first session to be devoted to disarmament, opened on 23rd May, 1978, at the United Nations headquarters, New York. The Assembly concluded its work in the early hours of July the 1st. Earlier, during that final meeting on 30 June, it adopted resolutions S-10-2, containing the final document of the 10th special session of the General Assembly, comprising an introduction, a declaration, and a program of action and establishing new international machinery for disarmament. Now listen to what I just said, establishing new international machinery for disarmament. And that's that multi-nation force that I told you about that's here with thousands of pieces of Russian armament, armored personnel carriers, tanks, decontamination vehicles, which means that they may even use biological or chemical warfare upon us. On page 22, it also decided to establish a program of fellowships on disarmament. Quote, implementation of the priorities mentioned in the program should lead to general and complete disarmament under effective international control, the assembly asserted, end quote. And, quote, the Committee on Disarmament was to undertake the elaboration of a comprehensive program of disarmament in order to ensure that the goal of general and complete disarmament became a reality in a world in which the new international economic order was strengthened. Let me say that again. The new international economic order was strengthened. That's a buzzword for the new world order. And you're still listening to Rush Limbaugh. You think he's telling you the truth. You better wake up. He's a detractor. He's a scam. He's a shill for the New World Order. Quote, necessary measures should be taken to maintain international peace and security, including the obligation of states to place at the disposal of the United Nations agreed manpower for an international peace force equipped with agreed types of armaments to ensure that the United Nations was able to deter or suppress any threat or use of arms in violation of its purposes and principles. You see, they're not talking about treaties that we made. They're talking about the United Nations as a world government. That's what this is all about. Quote, general and complete disarmament under strict and effective international control should permit states to have at their disposal only those non-nuclear forces, armaments, and facilities agreed to be necessary for internal order, end quote. No new world order. Rockefeller is not involved. The Trilateral Commission is not involved. The Council of Foreign Relations is not involved. Newt Gingrich is not involved. Bob Dole is not involved. Bill Clinton is not involved. He's just a nice guy with a, you know, with a wife that has a big mouth or something. They're all involved, or they wouldn't be there. They admit it in their own publications. 
This is the final document. On June 30th, 1978, at the end of the special session, the General Assembly adopted Resolution S-10-2, by which it adopted also the final document of the 10th special session of the General Assembly, providing a broad platform for further efforts by the United Nations in the field of disarmament. Etc., etc., etc. New world economic order. New world order. Words echoed over and over again years ago. The special session, and I'm quoting, must demonstrate to the world that the fundamental principles of the Charter continue to serve as the guiding light for the international community in its quest for a new economic, political, and social order based on a equality, and justice for all, end quote. That's socialist drivel, ladies and gentlemen. All the socialist regimes that have ever occurred are risen to power in the history of the world. You'll see that there was never equality for all, and there certainly was never justice for anybody. Limbaugh and all the others know about this, but they will not tell you about it, because if they do, they lose their radio shows. And they lose the millions of dollars that they've sold out for. Resolution S-10-2 is recommended by Ad Hoc Committee of 10th Special Session, AS-1023, Part 1, adopted without vote by Assembly on 30 June 1978. Without vote. Without vote. Quote, the nuclear and conventional arms buildup threatens to stall the efforts aimed at reaching the goals of development to become an obstacle on the road of achieving the new international economic order and to hinder the solution of other vital problems facing mankind. Conference of the Committee on Disarmament. And this is from 15th Annual Report to the Congress. United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency, Publication 88, released July 1976. The Geneva-based... Quote, the Geneva-based conference of the Committee on Disarmament held two sessions during 1975 that proved to be among the most active in the 13-year history of this principal multilateral forum for arms control negotiations. Its 31 member nations represent a geographic and political cross-section of the world. The representatives of the United States and of the Soviet Union serve as co-chairman. Ambassador Joseph Martin, Jr. led the United States delegation. Quote, The committee's agenda included several new issues that had been referred to it by the 1974 United Nations General Assembly. The question of nuclear weapon free zones, arms control implications of nuclear explosions for peaceful purposes, and environmental warfare, in addition to the topic of chemical weapons restraints and a comprehensive nuclear test ban. End quote. And under environmental warfare, listen to this, quote, The highlight of the session was the August 21st tabling by the United States and Soviet representatives of identical texts of a draft. Let me say that again. The highlight of the sessions was the August 21st tabling by the United States and Soviet representatives of identical texts of a draft. Listen to this. Identical texts of a draft entitled, quote, Convention on the Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Use of Environmental Modification Techniques, end quote. And it goes on and on and on and on. And they do have the ability to modify weather and just about make it whatever they want. I don't know if they've been doing that. But they have the ability. And we have found treaties that exist that acknowledge that they have the ability and prohibit the signatories to the agreement from using such technology to modify the weather or any other part of the environment without notifying the country that will be infected. It doesn't say they can't, it just says they have to notify. <laughs> and it goes on and on. The members, ladies and gentlemen, of the United Nations are fully aware of the conviction of their peoples that the question of general and complete disarmament is the, of the utmost importance and that peace, security, and economic and social development are indivisible and they have therefore recognized that the corresponding obligations and responsibilities are universal. You see what's happening? 